2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Just going to read a couple verses. Uh, Lord put this on my heart as I was uh, headed down to wherever I was at this week. I was in uh, Pennington Gap, Virginia, and in Morristown, Tennessee. Um, but uh, I, I want to look at verse number 3 this morning. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves uh, your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Lord, our hearts were blessed and stirred. And Lord, I thank you for giving folks that kind of talent. And Lord, I'm thankful they're not out trying to pursue a worldly career with their talent but Lord they're honoring you and God I thank you for it yes. uh, Lord we thank you for a good Sunday school hour thank you for good report of our jail services this morning and thank you for being a good God uh, Lord I pray for the next few minutes you'd continue to range the atmosphere here in the sanctuary and I pray you'd speak to hearts uh, I pray for every born again child of God you would stir them uh, and Lord, I pray that you would convict them to do more for the cause of Christ than ever before, for we know that your imminent return is at hand. And Lord, we can sing what a day that will be, but it will even be sweeter if we take more folks with us. So Father, I pray you'd convict us of that. And God, I certainly do pray for that child of God that may be discouraged this morning. You'd encourage them. That child of God that may be low, you'd lift them up. Uh, that child of God that may be struggling, you'd help them. Uh, that child of God that, uh, Lord, just feels like you don't care, I pray you just uh, reach down from heaven and God touch their heart and let them know uh, that, Lord, you do care and they can cast all their cares on you for you care it for them. Uh, then, God, I pray in a congregation this size, if there be somebody here that's not a child of God, uh, they may be religious, uh, they may have a knowledge of God, uh, but they've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Uh, I pray today would be the day uh, the sweet Holy Spirit of God would remove the blinders from their eyes. Uh, they'd see their lost condition, uh, and God, they'd come and accept the Lord and trust Him uh, as their Lord. Uh, Father, I pray you'd have your will and way in this service. Uh, God, I do pray for the sick and afflicted, and those that are providentially hindered. Uh, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. God, I pray Jesus would be high and lifted up. Uh, and God, I pray you'd have me to say everything you'd have me to say and nothing contrary uh, to the will or word of God. Uh, bless now, speak to hearts. Uh, we'll bless you for it, for it's in the holy, wonderful, and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Here the Apostle Paul's inspired to the write this letter uh, to the church at Corinth. Uh, I'm thankful there was a church at Corinth uh, but this was a very worldly church. Uh, this was a church uh, 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 that didn't have many constraints. Uh, and this church, uh, there was uh, some actual wickedness going on inside the house of God. Uh, and God inspired the apostle uh, uh, to write this letter to instruct them in the ways of righteousness uh, and to instruct them in the very will of God. Uh, and I want you to notice in these verses, first of all, uh, if you will, uh, the potential pitfall. Uh, look in verse number 3. Uh, it says but if our gospel be hid uh, it is hid to them that, is lost, uh, that are lost. Uh, now listen, we can come into the house of God this morning. Uh, we can rejoice. Uh, we can worship. Uh, we can enjoy the good singing. Uh, we can enjoy good fellowship. Uh, but friend if we leave it here uh, and we don't take it out to a lost and dying world, uh, it'll be a great pitfall. Uh, Jesus uh, 
commissioned us before he went to heaven. Uh, he commissioned his church uh, to go into all the world uh, and preach the gospel. Uh, my dear friends, uh, if churches would be true to the commission, uh, I'd preach people, uh, then teach them, uh, baptize them, uh, teach them to tell others also. Uh, my dear friends, uh, it would be a different world. Uh, but we've allowed the devil to beat us down uh, and we've allowed the devil uh, uh, to help us uh, not to shine our light uh, and people are dying and going to hell uh, because uh, the church has fallen down on the job. Uh, could I say... Uh, it's the Lord's will that none should perish, uh, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, but yet a lot of God's people have gotten to the, to the point where we've gotten so busy or we've got our minds on earthly concerns uh, and we lose sight of the fact uh, that all around us are people who need to hear the gospel. We can't save anybody, but we can tell everybody. So we see the potential pitfall in not sharing the gospel. Now notice the problem in verse number 4. In whom the God, if you've got the right Bible, God is a little case G. In whom the God of this world. Now can I say I don't have time to run this rabbit, but the, the devil, Satan, when he was cast out of heaven as Lucifer, the uh, uh, archangel, the uh, minister of music in heaven, uh, when he sinned against God and got filled with pride and tried to exalt himself over Christ, uh, he was cast out of heaven uh, and this earth became his domain. Uh, he is the prince and the power of the air. Uh, he is the God of this world. Uh, you say, preacher, why is all these crazy things happening in this world? Uh, why are people going into places and shooting them up? Uh, and why is there so much sin? And why is there so much evil? Uh, because the God of this world's doing a good job. That's why uh, we find the Bible says, in whom the God of this world uh, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, uh, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The problem is the devil's blinded people. We're to let our light so shine that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We're not saved by good works, but we're to exhibit good works once we're saved so people can see the Lord in us. Uh, now, my father used to own some racehorses. And he had one horse that while he was running, he got real busy looking around. And while he was looking around, he wasn't running too well. He'd look to the horse on the left of him, the horse on the right of him. He'd look at all the horses in front of him because he wasn't running real good. So the trainer put what they called blinders on him. And when he got those blinders on him, he couldn't see anything but what was straight ahead. Uh, and can I say the devil's put blinders on people. They're not seeing the gospel. They're not seeing God working all across this globe. Uh, they're not seeing God blessing like he does. Uh, they're not seeing his blessing in creation. Uh, they're not hearing his word. They're not seeing all that God's doing. All they're doing is they're running hard at sin because that's all they're looking at. We see the pitfall, the potential pitfall. We see the problem. But look at the power. Look in verse number 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Can I just stop right here? Not one song did they sing, did they say, look at right side, aren't we something special? Every song they sang was about the Lord and what the Lord's done. Hmm? He said, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Uh, the power comes from God. It's not from us. Uh, God, uh, uh, who spoke to darkness and brought light out of darkness, now light dispels darkness. Uh, it's all a work of God. Uh, if God doesn't ever convict anybody of sin, uh, if God doesn't ever draw them to an altar of repentance, uh, if God never shows them they can be saved from their sin, uh, if God never does the work, uh, nobody's going to get saved. Right. It's all about the power of God. We're just to exalt Him. And then he does for us what we can't do for ourselves. I'm interested there 
where Paul says, for we preach not ourselves. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4, he says, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's why I'm not an eloquent, eloquent speaker. I told you all last week I get nervous if somebody introduces me as the speaker. That happened this week in one of those churches. We've got a speaker here, and I'm looking around. Who are they talking about? Now, I may not always have the power of God on me, but I do not uh, uh, speak with enticing words of man's wisdom, if you know what I mean. huh? But uh, listen, I never want your confidence to be in Brother Doug. I want your confidence to be in what thus saith the Lord. If we can't put our faith and our confidence in what God said, we're in a mess. We're in trouble. Verse number 4 is where I want to focus. The Bible says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. I want to preach with God's help this morning on this thought. I want to preach on blinded minds and blurred vision. There are some people he's blinded their minds, and there are some people that along the lines their visions got blurred. Hmm? You see, uh, Brother Jake, they can't see until the Lord opens their eyes. But I've known some, Brother Jesse, that, that can see, but somewhere along the line they get their eyes blurred. Somewhere along the lines, all of a sudden, old time worship isn't, isn't important anymore. Somewhere along the lines, uh, uh, putting Jesus Christ isn't important anymore. Somewhere along the lines, their vision gets blurred. So I want to preach on blinded minds, uh, and blurred vision. Uh, can I say Satan has blinded the minds of lost people, blurred, blurred the vision of believers, uh, for he is very deceptive. He's a deceptive devil. Can I say this? Uh, he's a divider. Mm, can I say the Spirit of God wants to unite God's people? Where there is no unity, there is no unction. And the devil knows that, so he wants to divide God's people. Uh, he wants to put enmity between the people of God. Uh, he wants Brother Tony at odds with Brother Clint, Brother Clint at odds with the other Brother Clint, uh, and he wants people fussing and fighting and divided. Uh, that's the work of the, of the devil. Uh, anytime I start seeing... Uh, Folks getting cross with one another. Uh, I know that's not of God. Uh, and I know the devil's trying to blur somebody's vision. Uh, can I say this? Uh, the devil's a damning devil. Uh, 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 he never wants anybody to get uh, any glory. He never wants anybody to get any help. He never wants anybody to get a touch of God in their life. Uh, he wants your life damned. Uh, he wants your life destroyed. Uh, the thief cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy, Jesus said. Uh, can I I say this about the devil uh, he has power today uh, now don't lose sight uh, that the devil is a powerful devil uh, uh, you watch some of this uh, charismatic stuff uh, and they make it sound like we control the devil uh, uh, listen friend uh, we were created lower than the angels uh, never lose sight he was an archangel uh, he's not all powerful uh, but he is powerful uh, and he's more powerful than anybody sitting in this building today. Uh, and never lose sight. Uh, he does have power. Uh, can I say he's full of poison? Uh, uh, the devil uh, never wants to help you. Uh, the devil never wants uh, you to have the blessings of God. Uh, he's got poison. Uh, and he'll whisper sweet little nothings in your ear uh, uh, to attract you away from the blessings and the uh, rejoicing of God. Uh, and never lose sight of this about the devil. He's very patient. He don't have to get you today. But he's looking to get you. Uh, he's a patient devil. Uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed or ever seen a, 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 a water faucet that, uh, that just drips. You tighten it and tighten it and tighten it, but it just drips. Now, for a little while, it'll bother you. But if that thing goes long enough, uh, it'll drive you insane. Just that constant drip, drip. Drip. The devil don't always come in like a flood. Sometimes it's just a slow, steady drip to drive you away from the things of God. Uh, can I say this? The de devil's subtle. He doesn't show up in a red suit with a pitchfork with horns on his head. 
He's very subtle. He does things just a little bit off. And he's subtle and sneaky. Can I say this about him? He's seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's walking around here today seeking whom he can devour. Hmm? Uh, he may say, well, I can't get Sister Lisa. She's pretty plugged in. But Brittany's sitting there. Today might be a good day to gnaw on her. Hmm? Never lose sight. Slewfoot's lurking somewhere in the shadows. And if it's not him, it's one of his little imps. You realize when he was cast out of heaven, there was a legion of angels that was cast out with him. Mm -hmm. Can I say this about him? He's always setting snares. Now, he don't set snares like they did on the Andy Griffith show. Remember when Barney got lost in the woods? Uh, and he's trying to convince Gomer he knew what he was doing, and he didn't know nothing. And Andy snuck up and gave him an already cooked chicken from uh, 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 Aunt B, and Gomer put it in this uh, fake snare and said, Look, Barney, your snare, it caught this uh, chicken, and it, it's already cooked. And, of course, Barney said, Well, yeah, that's one of them whatever chickens out here in the woods. It gets cooked in the snare, you know. <laughs> Can I say the devil doesn't have snares that you can get out of when you get in his clutches my dear friends there's there's no escape without the help of Jesus can I say this the devil has a spirit can I say you can go to all kinds of churches and there's a spirit there that don't mean it's the spirit of God the Bible says in 1 John 4 1 beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are God. How can we try the spirits with the scriptures? Can I say the devil never run you to the word of God. He runs you away from the word of God. Uh, goes on to say because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Uh, can I tell you the spirit of the devil, the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit uh, that the devil uses. Uh, can I say it's manipulation through intimidation with the sole purpose of domination. Uh, 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 if there is somebody that wants to manipulate you into acting a certain way or going a certain way, uh, and they intimidate you to make you feel inferior, uh, uh, their whole purpose is they want to dominate you. Uh, they're full of the devil, because that's how he works, my dear friends. Uh, he'll pick on somebody. Let, let me pick on Seth. Here's Seth. He's at college. He's a loner because his beloved goes to a better college. She does go to OSU, man. You know what I'm saying? And you're sitting up there, and all the people in your dorm, they're all partiers, and they're all doing their thing. And here's it's lowly Seth sitting there, you know, hadn't read his Bible in three days. He's sitting there feeling all lonely, and, you know, here I am sucking my thumb. Nobody cares about me. And the devil... I'll send somebody. And that somebody starts making you feel inferior because you're not out partying, you're not out drinking because they want to manipulate you. And they start uh, working on those things that you feel low about. And then they start whispering to how much better of a time you could have and how uh, uh, there's other girls out there besides Bailey, you know. You know, there's more fish in the sea. You know that, don't you? Huh? You know, well, why sell for one, you know? And they start to intimidate you into thinking the way they think. And before long, they're going to dominate you. Everything they say, you're going to do. Hmm? You say, Brother Doug, that's kind of crude. It is. But I see it in relationships all the time. There's somebody makes somebody else inferior. Well, you can't find anybody other than me. 
because I'm the best there is. And they dominate people. And I see it in churches. You get a pastor that uh, uh, he wants to intimidate everybody and try and make them, uh, uh, force them to do things that he wants to do and have a whole list of rules you've got to do to make you spiritual. Uh, you know what to make you spiritual? Uh, spending time with God, spending time in His Word, spending time in prayer, uh, and working that out which He has put in you, uh, uh, learning to discern His voice. Uh, uh, that's what makes you spiritual, not a list of rules. Uh, can I say God gave me a list of rules in the Old Testament uh, some 600 laws uh, to prove we couldn't keep rules uh, but we can keep his word when he lives within us uh, can I say the devil desires your heart he desires your home and if you're not saved he desires to drag you off into hell if you are saved he wants you so uh, anemic spiritually that others will trip over you and die and go to hell so with that in mind let me show you how he blinds and blurs minds and vision can I say he does the blinding and the blurring he does that when he changes people's minds towards the scriptures in Genesis chapter number 3 we find the first time the devil comes on the scene and the very first thing he does, Brother Josh, is he just twists the Word of God. Mm. Brother Ron, he didn't throw it away and use something else. He just twisted it just a little bit. Huh? In Genesis 3, 1, the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. That's really not what God said. Hmm? But he just twisted it a little bit. It still sounded pretty spiritual. It still sounded like something God would say. And the woman being the weaker vessel, that's what God called her, not me. Don't get all mad at me. I'm not a chauvinist. I love women. I married one. Uh, I have one as a daughter. I have one as a daughter-in-law. I have one as a granddaughter. I love women, okay? But can I say this? She was the weaker vessel, so that's who he attacked. The devil's not looking to take on the one that's uh, closest to God this morning. He's looking to take uh, on that sheep that might just be a little bit uh, far away from the shepherd enough that he doesn't hear the shepherd's voice like he used to. Oh, yeah. And can I say, he attacked her by twisting the word of God. She bought it hook, line, and sinker. And can I say, so did Adam. Yeah. Because Adam's love for her was more than his love for God. And they disobeyed God that day, and that's why we're in the mess we're in. Uh, can I say he distorts the Word of God? He sows doubt to the Word of God. Brother Tony, if I could just uh, get to the point, the devil would love it, if I just got to the point where I'd just say, well, I don't know if God really meant that. Can I say he meant what he said? And he said what he meant. Hmm? Huh? Every little jot and tittle is what he meant. Hmm? Huh? Can I say God didn't need any of our opinion when he pinned it down? And God, all he told us to do was believe it. Brother Jimmy, there's a lot I don't understand in the Word of God. Half of it's not even been told, but I believe all of it. You know, I don't understand the Trinity. I don't understand how you can have three persons or three entities in one person. I don't understand that. But the Bible says it's so, so I believe it. Got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I don't understand that because I'm finite and he's infinite. I'm a hillbilly, he's God. I don't understand it all, uh, but I believe it all. Uh, I, uh, God said it, that settles it. I don't need to look anywhere else, uh, uh, but the devil would cause me to doubt the word of God. Mm -hmm. Can I say this? Uh, he also causes denial of the word of God. I don't know how many times I've preached to people the truth and them say, well, I believe this. Mm. well if you don't believe the word of God I can't help you right. mm. there are just people who deny it there are just people who think it's hogwash they are just people that believe Hollywood knows more than God mm. you say preach I don't believe that well I'm going to prove it to you when I got back from Tennessee got the mail and this was in the mail now that's great penmanship. 
They're either young or old. That's all I can say when they write like that. That's in the mail. And in the mail, I opened it up, and this is what they did. Somebody left a track. Probably Miss Lisa. She gives out a bunch of these. And this is what they thought of the Word of God. They tore it in half. And then they sent me some literature on being an atheist. And they mailed it to us. Now listen, I don't know if Miss Lisa passed this out or not. But I do know you pass out a bunch of these. If this person never trusts Christ and dies and goes to hell, their blood won't be required at your hand. You tried to give them the gospel. But the devil blinded this person's mind and distorted this person's viewpoint has sown seed of doubt in his heart so strongly that this person mailed it back to us. Do you realize this person, by putting a stamp on that and mailing this back to us, is actually paying to go to hell? Hmm? Hmm? I'm telling you, the devil's powerful. He blinds people's minds and blurs their visions towards the Scriptures. Can I say that he also does the same thing towards salvation? There are a lot of people who think they're saved and they're not. There are people that think they're going to heaven because they're born in America. Can I say America's going to hell as fast as she can? There are a lot of people that believe they're saved because they put money in an offering plate or that they helped a good cause, uh, that they sent some money to St. Jude. or uh, 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 and that it, you know, I see them commercials and I feel I could not imagine uh, if I had a child or a grandchild had cancer and had to go to that facility. Thank God there's facilities like that where all the care is free to those children and those families. Uh, but that's a good cause, but that won't get you to heaven. Uh, there's a lot of people... Uh, think that there's all different reasons why they're going to heaven uh, but my dear friend uh, you're only going to heaven uh, if you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and been saved uh, if your sins have been washed in the blood that he shed on Calvary uh, if you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone uh, he said uh, I am the way the truth and the life uh, no man cometh unto the Father uh, but by me uh, hey Matthew 7 uh, many shall come to him in that day and say did we uh, cast out demons in your name uh, did we prophesy in your name uh, did we do many wonderful works in your name uh, and he says depart from me ye that worked iniquity uh, I never knew you uh, Hey, salvation's not about religion. Uh, it's about a relationship uh, where you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and I echo what Sister Owen said. Uh, I'm glad that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know uh, my sin's been washed away. Uh, I, my name's recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, I'm heaven bound with the hammer down uh, because I know the Lord. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, I shook a preacher's hand. I wouldn't put any stock in that. I've known a lot of preachers that were buzzards. Mm. Well, I've been baptized. I want to help you something. There ain't no sanctified water anywhere. Well, I'm a member of a church. Well, friend, I was in a couple churches this week that are way down. I wouldn't put my confidence in, in, in a denomination or a church. You need to put your confidence and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then if you believe on the Lord, uh, first thing he wants you to do is get baptized and become a member of a local church and serve God in that church and be faithful to that church. Uh, but friend, being in the church won't save you being in Christ's will. He blinds people's minds to salvation. Can I say this? He'll blind your mind or blur your vision concerning your standing. I know people that never miss a church service and they're so far away from God they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in Revelation 3, 17, Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. He was talking to a church. Talking to folks in the church. 
Well, I'm sitting here. I don't need anything. Can I say every time I come in the house of God, I come looking for something because I need a lot. I need Him. I need His help. Uh, I need uh, Him to uh, do something for me that will help me this coming week. Uh, sometimes we get to think that we've arrived. I'll help you. I don't see a halo in the room. We haven't arrived yet. What a day that'll be when we do arrive. When we get to see Him as He is. Uh, when we get to bow before Him and proclaim Him Lord of Lord. I mean kiss His feet and tell Him how wonderful. What a day that's going to be. But until then, we haven't arrived. And our flesh is rotten. And we've got to keep it under subjection. And the devil wants to blur your vision. Make you think you're okay when you're not. Listen, I'm looking forward to the camp meeting this week, but I need camp meeting this week. And let me help you with something, church. We need camp meeting this week. Some of you aren't a picture of what you used to be. Some of you are going through some motions. But you just need to get in. Uh, uh, them kids came back from camp last week fired up. Uh, Should have rubbed off on some of us. I think some of us have rubbed off on some of them because some of them look like a little pie-eyed this morning, huh? Uh, it'll blur our vision. It'll blind our minds. Can I say he's blinded a lot of people's minds towards the season. Paul wrote the church of Thessalonica in chapter... 5 verse Thessalonians chapter, verse number 1 but of the times and the seasons brethren you have no need that I write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night and can I say he wrote other places some things that's going to transpire before the Lord comes back guess what they've all transpired we do live in perilous times men are calling that which is good evil and that which is evil good there has been a great falling away the love of many has waxed cold we are living uh, I believe in the last moments of the last uh, uh, minutes and, and uh, hours of the last days uh, friend this thing's winding down the Lord Jesus is coming back uh, how do you know because he promised uh, and it's impossible for him to lie uh, he's a coming uh, I'm a man, but the devil's got people's minds so blurred and so blinded. Uh, many sitting in churches knows he's coming. You just don't think he's coming today. If we truly knew that he was coming today, them dear folks wouldn't have got to sing. There'd been no Sunday school teaching. We'd have been in this altar begging God that we can get right with God, and then we'd have been running and telling everybody we know he's a coming, he's a coming. I got news for you. He's a coming. And it could be today. Are you ready to meet him? Mm -hmm. And then let me say this. The devil's blinded people's minds to their sentence. If you talk to most people that will admit they don't know if they're going to heaven or not. Most people have this belief. When they die, God's going to weigh all their good points and weigh all their bad points, and if their good outweighs their bad, they get to go to heaven. And they all think they're better than what their bad points are. Even though the Bible says there's not one that do it good. No, not one. Uh, the Bible says all of our righteousness, all of our goodness is but filthy rags. Because we measure our goodness to somebody else. But our measuring stick is Christ. And none of us measure up to him. But the devil's blurred people to that. And the devil's blurred people to the fact they're going to stand before God too, but at a different throne. They're going to be at the great white throne. And he's blinded their minds to these verses. Revelation 21, 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death revelation 20 verse 13 and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and uh, uh, they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell was cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire he's blinded the minds of people that they're going to have to give an account of their sin to God but you and I that have been saved, our sins were washed away at Calvary. 
I was judged for sin at Calvary. And I'll appear at the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of the deeds done in my body after I was saved. I won't give an account for the sin. That's gone. But I'll give an account of what I did with the Bible and what I did with the things of God after I got saved. Amen. And that's where there's a potential pitfall. A lot of people got the mindset, I'm saved, that's good enough. God didn't save you to sit. God saved you to serve. He saved you to let others know they too could be saved. Many people's visions blurt. But even more many people's minds have been blinded. And they're going to die and go to hell. I wonder this morning, has God spoken to your heart? You might be here today and you might realize, I'm not saved. I've got good news. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come and accept Christ. You can be saved today. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. It's easy to get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You can be saved. Uh, for whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. If you realize you're lost, that's all you really need to know. And if you turn and put your faith and trust in Jesus, he'll save you. If you're here today and you're saved, what have you been doing for the gospel's sake? Has he blurred your vision? Hey, it's easy. It's easy. We can get weary and well-doing. I've been so busy this week, I don't even know where I'm at. People keep asking, how's your trip? And I have to think, where have I been? I mean, I mean, I, my mind is so jacked up. I've been so busy. And it's so easy to get our vision blurred. Just being busy. I'm not talking about being wicked and sinful. And all. I'm just talking about you can get so busy you can forget what we're supposed to really be about. I wonder, has God spoke to your heart? Why don't you come this morning and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, help my vision to be focused on you and your will for my life. This morning, maybe somebody just needs to do business with the Lord. So I'm going to ask Brother Jimmy and the boys to come and just pick out a song for invitation. And while they're coming to get a song ready, if y'all stand, some are already coming to the altar. If God spoke to your heart, just come. While folks are coming, I'm going to have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, I, I fear so many, the devil's blinded their minds. There may be somebody here today whose mind's been blinded. I pray, pray that the light of the gospel would open their eyes to truth. I pray they'd come, trust Christ. I pray for your people. It's gotten blurred vision. Lord, it's so easy to happen. God, help them get refocused on Christ. God, bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.